Since you're such a big meditator, um, can you tell us how you meditate and then give some tips as well? The meditation technique that I do, this Vipassana technique, it's like, to give the meditation instructions, like that's why you go away to a 10 day course, because at the 10 day course, you learn step by step. You know, it's like one giant led meditation course. So if you're interested in that style of meditating, you can check dhamma.org, dhamma.org, and then you can see if that's something you want to try. It's very difficult. Mm. It's not like hard, like the meditation instructions themselves are, you know, very, they're very simple, but they're very hard to do. And, but the process of going to a 10 day course, you know, it's meant to help you clear the subconscious of your mind. But in the process of clearing the subconscious of your mind, like there's going to be some gnarly stuff in there, right? Like all this, like old trauma, old hurt, like all this old anger, jealous, whatever, whatever heavy emotions you've been accumulating throughout your lifetime, they're going to be there. And I think for anybody that does is interested in meditating, like there are, uh, there's so many different types of meditating that what you want to do is sort of allow yourself to be steeped in a style of meditating so that you can really understand how it functions because different meditation traditions, they're going to have different goals and different ways that they go about it and different ways that they deal with, you know, emotions and whatever it is that comes up. So general advice for meditating is like, you know, find a technique, learn it well, and learn it from someone who's been meditating for many, many thousands of hours, not just somebody who like took, you know, who just like learn how to meditate over the weekend. Right. So each time you do the, these like 10 day or retreats, it's the same type of meditation. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing the same style of meditation. Uh, so you've gone deep with this one style. Yeah. I picked this, this one style as because when I came out, I, I knew that like my mind genuinely felt lighter. Like that's where I got the title from for, of lighter. Cause like, I, I was like, I'm not enlightened, but my mind is lighter. Wow. And then I thought to myself, well, I could go explore other things, but why? You know, like this thing is giving me, it works so well. And one of my friends had this beautiful saying, he was like, if I have fresh water here, why am I going to go over there for fresh water? Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. to me, it's like, let me try to master this technique as much as I can in this one lifetime and do my best with making progress. And even, you know, I just finished a, a silent 45 day retreat in that same 45. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Wow. Yeah, it was a long one, but in that same style. And when I came out, like I've never, my mind has never, ever been that peaceful, like ever, ever, ever in my life. And I could feel it. And my, even my wife, she sat the course too. And she was like, wow, you're different. And to me, it's like, um, if I'm getting so much from this technique, you know, why would I go somewhere else? Yeah, that makes sense. Wow. Um, so with this style of meditation, you said meditate, different types have different goals. What's the goal of this, this style and how long in one period are you meditating for? In the course, in the, sorry, in the meditation retreats, you're meditating, like, you know, you have, you'll meditate for like an hour and then take like a five minute break and then come back and you'll, you'll, you'll do as much as you can do, but you have the opportunity to meditate up to 11 hours a day. <laughs> wow. Okay. And, you know, during, so like when I was at the 45 day retreat, I was meditating 11 hours a day. And, um, and it's, you know, it's a type of practice where like the goal is purification. Like the goal is the end of suffering. You know, like it's, it's a meditation that originates from the Buddhist teaching. And the goal is really just to, to cut at the root of what's creating misery. And that root is craving. The root is aversion, aversion, ignorance. So you spend your time cultivating wisdom by being able to observe the truth within the framework of the body. And when you're able to observe that truth, it helps just clean out the mind. And you'll feel, you know, the memories of what happened in the past, they won't go away, but the intensity of the reaction, that does decrease over yeah. time. Wow, so you, when you're in a deep session like that, what are you experiencing? The, the, clearest, the clearest thing that you're experiencing is the truth of impermanence, is like the truth of change. Like, you're clearly understanding this like fundamental law that is pervasive throughout the universe. And luckily you have a sample of the universe w within your body, right? Within your body, you have like whatever, well, you know, everything else that's out there in the universe, it's inside of you. Um, and that truth of impermanence is like, it's a real like life changer because a lot of the difficulties that we have is because we're rejecting yeah. change. 
Like we're fighting change. We don't like change. We want whatever it is that we find enjoyable to stay the same all the time. And that's not realistic. Like life is constantly ebbing and flowing and changing. So if we're able to embrace change, and luckily we can experience that change within the framework of the body so we get more used to it, then when you're out there living life, it becomes a lot easier when there's a change that you like or there's a change that you don't like. So you get less attached to either one. Right. I mean, how have you changed as a person then? I would Let's say in the past couple of years. And then also going deep into meditation, like how are you changed now? When I think of my past self, I was a lot rougher and not like necessarily mean or, you know, I was just like, I was rough, like rough in my interactions. And now from all this meditating, I feel like it's my job to just move through the world gently, you know, to just, and gentleness has been like my mission, like, you know, just be gentle with the people that you're interacting with, do your best to like bring harmony to a situation if you can. And um, that change I think has been like, it's been really nice because if you're, you know, actively trying to support harmony, then that's going to also support the harmony in your mind. So much of what you're saying is resonating with me. I literally came out with a video today called like the gentle pursuit of inner joy and fulfillment. Cause oh, I'm cool. also, I'm also leaning towards like a more gentle life where you're just flowing intuitively like nature and you embrace the change, you embrace the seasons, like Like you don't need to do anything beyond that. There's no need to force or to try or, you know what I mean? Like I, and I think more people are coming to the gentle, more of the gentle perspective of life versus like the super masculine hustle, right? Totally, totally. And it's fine to be like ambitious and have goals, but you don't need to like be mad stressed out to accomplish them. Exactly, yeah. Like you're still doing a lot of amazing things like your writing and your businesses, like people would think that you're in go, go, go mode, (laughs) but to hear that you're still able to have a level of peace and balance while doing these things, I think is really encouraging. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. It feels like to me, like first and foremost, I'm a meditator and then everything else is second, you know? So like I, so I, I put the time in, like I meditate two hours a day, every day, one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. And that's my time where I get to like, you know, reconnect with that truth of impermanence, like regenerate and really just like not allow delusion to take place. Cause like a lot of our stress comes from delusion. Like we get so agitated by these stories in the mind and we forget that, you know, we're creating a lot of misery for ourselves. Yeah. So Diego, at the end of your life, what do you want to be remembered for? Oh, hopefully that I was, that I was a good server. Um, you know, like I think I like the term, the term service because that feels really important. It just feels really important to serve people well, whether it's, you know, in the product that you're creating or the art that you make or the, you know, podcast you might be doing, or even in your, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, like that you're actively trying to serve people well. And I think, um, you know, hopefully people are like, he served really well. He was a good server. Nice. <laughs> I just realized we didn't talk about your next book. So <laughs> can you give us anything about what the next book would be about? Uh, sure. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm halfway through the book right now and um, I'm excited to write the other half, but the next one is like just about love. It's about love and relationships. Oh. And I had a chapter, you know, like I wrote, I've written poems about it. I had a chapter about love in lighter, but I realized like that I need, I can dedicate a whole book to it. And um, it's such a big topic that you can take it in so many different directions, but I wanted to be really focused in on how your personal growth really elevates your ability to love. Yep. Like the more you can love yourself, the more you can love others. And the more you're aware of, <laughs> the more you can be understanding and compassionate. Totally. And it gives you a lot of patience. Yeah. And I, I'm curious, like, so you mentioned you and your wife are on the same path. Yep. So how does her being in your life influence your work? Huge. She's a huge influence. She's she's always the... And is she a behind the scenes person? Because she... is she public in any way? No, no, she's totally private. She doesn't, she doesn't want, she doesn't want any attention. Not on social media at all. 
not on she has she has her private account that like you know 300 people follow her and um but she's my manager and she's also my primary like my first editor oh, okay she reads everything you write she reads everything and she's like this is not good this doesn't make sense like, <laughs> <laughs> and just like gives it to me 100 percent truthful um yeah but she's like, she's made everything possible. Like she's the center of my life. You know, she's like, mm. she's an incredible human. Was she there with you for most of the journey? Oh, the whole thing, the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing yeah. from the beginning. We've been, oh, we've been together incredible. for, a, we've been together. We got together when she was 18 and I was 19. So we had this very kind of chaotic first half of our relationship just because like we were both really immature. There was no like emotional maturity between either of us. You grew together, you evolved together. Yeah, we, we definitely grew together. And, um, and now we have, you know, we still have our, like our ups and downs, but we're, there's a deep, deep love that binds us together. So, but through that, like I, I trust her the most and I really trust her intuition. So that's why she's my manager because whenever we're, you know, making any deals with people or new publishers or new editors and whatnot. I also like, you know, she needs to say, okay, too, because if like someone doesn't feel quite right, then, then it's a no. You tell her, I think she deserves more credit. (laughs) 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 She's part of Young Pueblo, this, this career and this business, this journey. Yeah. I mean, she's definitely part of it. And she's like, she's amazing. She's a fantastic person, but, um, I, I admire the way she just like, is able to, you know, she's, she's helped build this whole thing too. Yeah. But I'm, I'm also yeah. trying my best to respect what she wants. I mean, the other day there was, we got this offer to, um, that somebody really wanted the both of us to speak about our relationship and they wanted to pay us a bunch of money. And she was like, heck no. She was like, I'm not, <laughs> you know, like, I'm not trying to yeah, do because that. Because if you're writing about relationships and love, it kind of seems natural to like bring her into it, but she's <laughs> not down. Yeah, she's she's not interested. Yeah. So I just respect her wishes and yeah, it's fine by me. Yeah, it's just interesting to hear. Again, I can relate to your life because I've also been with the same person. Mm-hmm. We're not married yet, boyfriend since I was 17, but he's literally been with me this whole journey. Cool. Like, you know, I you were very immature when you started dating and you literally became different people in different stages of your life. It's kind of crazy. It really is. And it feels like, it almost feels like a different life. Like when I look back on how I was before, it just feels totally foreign. Mm -hmm. It's just like- Like who was I? (laughs) Yeah, like that was me, but I'm really glad that I made the decisions to get me to where I am now because I'm, yeah, just totally different than before. Yeah. And I think it's a beautiful thing when you can continue growing together at like and staying together because sometimes people it doesn't always match up but the fact that you were both on this journey and you're still here is amazing i know and i think it's because we were both i think that's part of the reason like there was something special about us coming together i think um you know not only do we have a deep connection but once we started meditating that was when we were both like oh now i see why we're mm-hmm. together like we both really love yeah. this thing but it just took us a while to get to it and um, she feels like, you know, she's my wife, but she's also my comrade yeah. in wisdom. Amazing. All right, Diego, do you have any final messages that you want to leave the listeners with today? It could be on any topic that we cover today. I think one thing that is really helpful is I love the way people have gratitude practices like during the day. And it's really valuable because it's so easy to just forget that you have running water and food and, you know, like air to breathe and these sort of beautiful, majestic basics of life. But the same way that we should have these daily moments of gratitude, I also think it's important to, even at the intellectual level, um, to just remember that everything's always changing, right? Every, everything is changing and you don't know when the big changes will come. So if there are people with you that you love, appreciate them, like be present with them, pay attention to them when they're speaking. And you know, value that these opportunities that you have because you don't know when they're going to end, when they're going to go away. And similarly, when bad things are happening, like they're also temporary. So just just allow change to keep yeah. flowing. I think the more you embrace change, the more you it, it helps you appreciate the present moment. 